What a delight to be here with you today. This is Pastor Gabriel Swaggart, and welcome once again to these daily video blogs. We're so glad to have you joining us, wherever you may be. And uh, we're just grateful that you're subscribing to this particular YouTube channel. But uh, if you know people that would enjoy teaching regarding the Word of God, why don't you send these videos along to them or, and tell them to subscribe to this channel. And uh, we get these things, we try to do them every day. Now, there's sometimes we're just not able to do it, but we try. And, uh, but I really believe that it's something that's worth, uh, it's, it's worth investing in regarding the believer. And uh, I just encourage you, if you're able to do so, subscribe to this channel and tell others about this channel as well. We have been covering the subject of the Holy Spirit and uh, we have begun a series just uh, a couple of programs ago from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 3. These are the words of John the Baptist, and I'm going to read them here to you, beginning in verse number 11. John the Baptist would say, I indeed baptize you, this is Mark, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. We're dealing with three things. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Spirit baptism. And number three, how the Holy Spirit works in the life of the believer. I want to mention this regarding Jesus Christ. Number one, as you know, He is the Savior of the world. He is the most, as what some individuals say, the most influential person who's ever lived. He is the creator of the worlds. The one that would speak worlds into existence, the ones that would speak light into existence. When He came here on to live on this planet. He came not as God, but as man. God would speak and He would say and call His name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. He was God, manifest as man. Keith Babin likes to say it this way, he's the only 200% man that's ever lived. He was 100% God and 100% man. However, Everything he did on this earth, whether it was performing miracles, whether it was teaching, whether it was preaching, whatever it was, and especially Calvary, he didn't do any of those things as God, but rather as a man filled with the Holy Spirit. I believe it was in the Gospel of Mark where Mark would record after... Um, after the baptism, after John the Baptist would baptize him in water, that the Bible said that, and I believe it was in Mark, it may have been in Matthew too, but that the Spirit drove him into the wilderness where he would spend 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. He was a man full of the Holy Ghost. If Jesus needed, well, uh, let me before that, let me say this. I want you to listen to me very carefully right now. When he was baptized in the River Jordan, John the Baptist, the Bible says that the heavens opened. God spoke and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And the Spirit descended in the form and the shape of a dove and rested upon Christ. If Jesus needed the Holy Spirit, then where does that leave you and me here today? If Jesus needed the Holy Spirit, then where does that leave you and me? In order for Jesus to perform the miracles, to speak, to teach, to preach the way that He did, He had to have the Holy Spirit. In prayer, he was led by the Holy Spirit. He would go certain directions. He would go into Jericho. He would go to a city called Nain because he was led by the Spirit. Everything he did 
was led by the Holy Spirit, guided by the Holy Spirit, directed by the Holy Spirit. Every miracle he would perform from the changing of the water into wine to healing, the healing of blind Bartimaeus and everyone in between, he did as a man full of the Holy Spirit. Every demon he cast out, it was because he was a man full of the Holy Spirit. He laid aside his deity without losing the expression of his deity. He was very much God, but he was man. And we have to understand that, that Jesus Christ, even though he was God, he relinquished his, if you will, that's, that's, let me change it this way. He laid aside his deity in order to do what needed to be done. You see, God can't die. He's always been around, always will be around. He cannot die. However, as a man, he can. Jesus had to come for one reason, because of the sin debt that hung upon mankind. And there had to be a sacrifice. There had to be one, a representative man that would pay the price to purchase back, to buy back that which Adam lost in the fall. So Jesus Christ did that. So going back to my question, if Jesus needed the Holy Spirit, where does that leave us? You and I as believers need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Why, how, why, do, we, why do we say that? And we're going to look at this a little later on, but I'm going to say this right now. If Jesus needed it and He commanded His disciples to have it in Acts chapter 1 verse four and five and eight. As the disciples were wanting to talk about all sorts of things, Jesus ignored them all and he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Jesus needed it and he commanded his disciples to have it, which means that you and I have to have it right now. For anything that God has called us to do, we've got to have the power of the Holy Spirit. Now I've run out of time. We're gonna look at this a little bit on the next program. We love you, God bless you. We'll see you next time in the world.